booty, 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 rocking everywhere, rocking everywhere, rocking everywhere. I found you, booty sushi. Take that pyramid and bring it up to me. I'm Joel Hanser. Today we're in Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah! I love it down here. It's so cool so far. Much love in Atlanta, Georgia. At Booties Sushi. Booties, yes. Booties. 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 Who doesn't like booties? Who doesn't like sushi? So here I am with Mr. Randy Santel and Ms. Rena Huang to do the big booties pyramid challenge. So this is an absolutely massive sushi pyramid. Yes, that is right. So we got rice, we got all different kinds of fish, uh, tunas galore, salmon. We got some kind of tuna belly in there. We got crab, we got everything. It looks delicious, avocado. I'm so excited, absolutely massive. It's like seven, eight pounds, maybe even bigger. So big, big, big sushi pyramids. Let's go check this out, let's have some fun. I love sushi, I love it all. Let's eat some food. coming off a big team win yesterday against that big Mexican challenge, but now today, Marie's doing the challenge solo, hoping to win. Big thanks to the owners here at Booty Sushi. We've got Booty and then his wife, Sandy. Big thanks to them for having us in, but let's shut up and eat. One, two, three. Boom. Boom. All right, and then we've each got bowls of their spicy ponzai sauce, and then we've got ponzu sauce, and then we've got a bunch of guacamole here, and then we've got some ginger. I know that's wasabi. I won't be having much of that, but let's just dig in. Starting with some of these fish eggs. Are they different? Should. Are they different flavors? Yeah. Mm. Put the sauce on it. Put the sauce. Mm. Put the sauce. We've got orange, apple, and strawberry. <laughs> Something like that. I'm kidding. That sauce is really good. Good, huh? Hey everyone, welcome to today's video where today we're at Booty Sushi in Atlanta, Georgia. So definitely excited to be in Georgia, uh, in Atlanta specifically guys. Um, I really liked it here. The people were great, the food is great, and here at Booty Sushi, well hey, let's hope that continues on. So here we are doing their absolutely massive pyramid sushi challenge. So they had a little version of this, which is basically on top. Um, it was the size of that little crown, the little egg crown. Um, but obviously ours is much, much, much bigger. Um, they weighed about seven, eight pounds. Randy and I went with the traditional ones, whereas Reyna, uh, who does not, I guess, eat or like raw fish, um, she went with a totally cooked version. So I believe her fish was, I don't know if it was all the fish or just the tuna belly, whereas uh, Randy and I had uh, red tuna, we had yellowfin tuna, we had salmon, we had tuna belly, and I believe that was it. So definitely a variety of fish. Um, of course, with lots and lots of rice, we also had a crab salad on there. The eggs were spicy, uh, again, that little topper. But besides that, it was all pretty good, pretty mild. Um, and then we had the uh, ponzu sauce, um, which was great, very, very delicious, kind of like a sweetened soya sauce in a way. Uh, nice to add a little bit of sodium there. We also had the wasabi and the ginger, of course, should we want kind of those accents. Um, but definitely, this was a lot of food, and it was one that we knew that we were gonna have to get into and gun pretty hard to make sure that we were going to get the win. That tuna belly. Yep. Yes. Belly. Thank you, thank you. Which one's that? Oh yeah. Oh, the tuna belly is cooked. Yeah, it's cooked. Okay, so Rain over here has the tuna belly, which is cooked. Which now that I hear it, it makes sense that it's cooked. 
So for this we had one hour ultimately to complete it and then I believe it got a price tag of approximately 200 and some dollars, like maybe $250 uh, if we were not to complete it. Um, so definitely it carried a big price tag, but again, I mean, you are getting pounds, literally, literally pounds and pounds of raw fish. Um, you know, so definitely something to consider, especially when you're considering the quantity you're getting here versus like a normal sushi roll, which you pay $10 for. I mean, this is like, this is enough to feed a, like a huge family under normal circumstances, like seriously. Just over three minutes in, everything's going real well. We're all succeeding. So yeah, no complaints there. Yeah. Yeah, girl. Thank you. Whereas like a normal sushi roll probably weighs about a quarter pound or maybe even less, like an eighth, you know, like a maki roll. Um, you know, again, this being seven or eight pounds, so pretty phenomenal. Uh, like I said, they did have a smaller version of this as well, um, which actually went viral uh, across kind of Instagram, other social media. So hence we have the bigger version um, that we are ultimately eating today. Um, if you want to try it out, you definitely need to give them a call in advance just to set it on up. Um, but besides that, I mean, like I, you can also, like I said, order it as a big item. I would recommend sharing it again with a large party or a family or something like that. I would never recommend uh, somebody trying to eat this much food in one sitting. Uh, that being said, um, yeah, that's pretty much, I think, all the information. Again, great to meet up with Randy and Reina. Um, but yeah, pretty much heading it on to this. I uh, really enjoyed the land of Georgia, guys. We'll have some cool, uh, not only... I'll say like exciting footage. Like you just make a long story short, you're gonna get to see some more footage of Atlanta, Georgia at the end. Um, you also get to see uh, the crowd. We had a lovely crowd here, guys. Huge thanks to everybody who came out. It was absolutely excellent, guys. It's a very memorable experience for a number of different reasons. Um, so ultimately, let's get into this. Hopefully, we all can pull through. And trust me, this is when you're not gonna want to miss. We have some uh, interesting action all throughout. So with that, let's get to the rest of the video. Four minutes, forty-five seconds in. Randy is very much doing well. Raina is also killing it. I'm doing not too bad. So yeah, we only got about 55 minutes left. We're eight minutes and 40 seconds in. We're all doing pretty good. Yes. This is my first time sitting in forever, so I'm struggling. Struggling early. Turn on the afterburners and catch up. There you go. <laughs> oh, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> I'll slow down, don't worry. Yeah. One day, 
I challenged my polar bear. He said, if you eat that, I'm going to eat you. Ooh, long story short, he's no longer with us. Oh. There you go. Not that I'm wishing for it, but if he gets disqualified, I can actually beat him. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Randy. <laughs> so, we're like 1440, rather than well. Randy is now two thirds to three quarters down. Well, yes. Three Raina, fifths. Raina's doing really well. Maybe about. Two quarter, two thirds done, and uh, you just have a little bit left. So Soon Joel is doing well. Let's go, Joel. Woo! It would have been real impressive though if he had used chopsticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Amen. What is that? Is that mocha? Matcha, no. He can have some of the matcha ice cream over here after he's done. That's not straight wasabi. Yeah, pistachio, yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, I do like pistachio ice cream. Is your plan about my doubt? Second. Great job, Joel. Yes. Joel has got the new record. Tell us what you thought while Rain and I keep on going. Yeah, challenge is really good. Large variety of different fishes. You can taste every one. Ponzu sauce, excellent addition. Definitely a very unique dish. Uh, the restaurant basically took over Atlanta and the social media with their pyramid. And now having this even bigger period pyramid, I'm sure it's going to happen even more so. So yeah, great food, great staff, no complaints. Let's cheer on Mr. Randy Santel and Ms. Raina Huang as they finish up. So they're doing great. Yeah. We're like 25 minutes and 20 seconds in. Randy Santel had to get on his knees. Rain is doing real well. We're playing musical chairs. I'm gonna hop in between them here.
Thankfully, we still have over a half hour to go. Don't plan on using it though, we're okay. All right. Put a nugget tea. I'm going to try to finish up the big bites of fish first and then just have rice and crab salad left. the world of coke. So down in Atlanta, Georgia, they have the world of coke. Uh, unfortunately, we did not get to go in today, but we saw the outside we're going to do it tomorrow. But we saw the remaining downtown. It was beautiful. Um, we had the lovely Centennial Park, which was there with a lot of uh, acclimates to the Olympics. We saw the beautiful Sky Wheel. We saw the College Football Hall of Fame. Some of the many beautiful sights you can see in downtown Atlanta, Georgia, including the brand new Mercedes-Benz Stadium as well. The list goes on. I love Atlanta. Georgia's a beautiful place, and they got some dang good food. So, Randy is about 32 minutes in. Randy's about 32 minutes in. We're both getting there. We're both doing real well. We just gotta keep our heads down and keep gunning. Let's go! Hey, officially threw in the towel. Is that correct? Yeah, we're gonna watch Randy. <laughs> so Randy, we're gonna we'll cheer on this Randy. Very good attempt to Raina. <laughs> We can't have just a Canadian win. I gotta represent America and get the win. Let's go, Randy. <laughs> Taking seconds okay, but we can't have both losers. There are no losers here, guys. Well, we're well, that'll winners. get caught. I shouldn't have said that. I'm also going slow and steady because there's a lot of people here and there's a lot of photos to take after this. And, oh, I want everybody to leave here with clean clothes. <laughs> Preferable. Oh. Preferable. Oh. I'll have to get a 
away a sweet teacher. I can't let Joel finish with a cleaner plate than me. So let me clean up some of these last scraps. with a great record. I finished just a few minutes behind him. 38 minutes and 37 seconds. That was such a delicious giant sushi pyramid here at Booty Sushi in Atlanta, Georgia. I don't really know what fish I loved the most. Uh, they all went down really smooth just because they weren't cooked, I guess, other than that tuna belly. But um, everything was great. The fish heads are... Uh, Fish babies, fish eggs uh, on the top. Those were a little bit spicy, but I really enjoyed them. Big thanks to Raina and Joel for taking the challenge with me here at Booty Sushi. And of course, thanks to the owners, Booty and Sandy. Uh, we're about to find out in a little bit how much the meal costs, but Joel and I are gonna get our meals free. Oh, we'll also get sweet t-shirts, which are over here. We've got Booty Sushi. And then on the back, we've got a uh, Maguro, which means congratulations, you guys did great. What's it actually mean? Tuna. 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 Maguro, oh, it means tuna. Okay. And then we'll also have the first two photos up on the Wall of Fame, and then next time Raina's here in Atlanta, she'll be able to come back and dominate. So thank you guys all for being here. For Joel, it was overall win number 212. Right. And then for me, it was 890, just 10 away from the big 900. Woo. We'll have another one all together in Sugar Hill, Georgia, tomorrow. So thank you guys for watching. Thanks to Georgia. Huge thanks to everybody who came out here at Booties. Booty, booty, booty today. So huge thanks to everybody here. Thank you so much, everybody. Much appreciated. Just a lovely crowd, a lovely place. Thank you so much to the staff, everybody here. Until next time, everybody. Of course, stay happy, all the hungry, happy eating. Don't do what I do. Have a lovely day. But have a lovely life. Come visit Georgia and just get yourself some good food here at Booties. Until next time, everybody. All right, everyone. Here we are at the world of coca-cola which is basically like a kind of coca-cola museum and or exhibit so yeah we're gonna check this place out it's gonna be a lot of fun this is definitely one of the must sees must do here in atlanta georgia so let's go learn about coca-cola and the crazy history that it has all right so upon entering the coca-cola uh world coca-cola we have different looking coke bottles they are almost like different ethnic looking coke bottles very interesting you then get to go to a tasting table. Tasting, not really tasting. You get to basically pick either a uh, standardized Coke Zero, Coke Diet Coke, regular Coke, or Coke Life. And you take one and you enter the Coke world. Here is the first room. It says drugs, Coca-Cola. Lots of different Coke signs. Lots and lots of different Coke signs. And some old machines. And the guy talking. During that time, I'll give you a brief history of Coca Cola, show you a couple artifacts around this room, and then you'll just above my head, you'll see the five monitors. They will show you a short film entitled Moments of Happiness. It is a sweet little film. It has going to make a few people cry. In May 8th of 1886, by Dr. John Stythe Pemberton. You might have seen his statue outside of Pemberton Place, the very foundation of which this building was built off of, was named after our founder. He created the formula in 1886 at a place called Jacob's Pharmacy, which was about a mile from where we are standing here today. 
And the vault of the secret formula is literally a freaking vault, which is pretty cool. Excuse me. And at the heart, there is a Coke secret of Coca Cola. Wow. Look at that. For me? Thanks so much. So, a new tense sensation. Whoever didn't just introduce better Coke or the better cola, he presented the world with the first cola. Interesting. A new beverage and drink unlike anything else. Look at that. It's, it's uh, it moves, but he just invented a delectable drink. But his bookkeeper gets the credit for naming the beverage Coca Cola. Interesting. Pemberton used a percolator like this one to mix various concoctions in his laboratory. There was just three weeks after Coca-Cola made its debut, an ad for the new beverage appeared in the Atlanta Journal. Wow, that's impressive. The magic formula. To dealing with pharmacists, that's pretty crazy. Popular product, more rival. The secret recipe for Coca-Cola became the most sought after and closely guarded trade secret in American history. Wow. This is pretty interesting. In a flourish of fizz and flavor, Jacob's Pharmacy in Five Points, Atlanta served up the first glass of Coca-Cola in May 8, 1886. So Jacob's Pharmacy. People who worked in soda fountains were called soda jerks because of the motion required to pull the lever and the glass of the carbonated water. Pemberton sold 25 gallons of Coca-Cola syrup in its first year, earning about 50 cent or $50, but the, he ran up 75 in expenses. So first year he wasn't making money, but I'm sure that changed very shortly after. Griggs Chandler knew a good thing when he tasted it, so in 1888 he put his money where his mouth is and began buying shares in Coca-Cola. Three years later, Chandler was the sole owner of the secret formula for Coca-Cola, as well as its trademark, and then the Coca-Cola company was created. Traveling style Coca-Cola syrup was shipped in oak barrels, painted a distinctive shade of red. Keep the secret. First person as uh, Chandler trusted the formula was a candler. So he ordered all the ingredients, he locked away the purchasing records, and he only had the key. Wow, this, this is very secret. Candler devised a way to let people elsewhere produce a syrup without knowing ingredients. The Interesting. Had a laboratory space located on the first floor in the corner of the building. It was a triangular shape. Thoroughly scientific product made by a chemist of skill and experience, a master in the knowledge of the properties of the ingredients. Uh, citizens of Atlanta, really, so they elected the guy, uh, Coca-Cola mayor, that's pretty cool. Um, locked behind the fireproof door was a secure triangular room for storing ingredients for mixing the secret formula. Interesting, that's Coca-Cola. And that was the uh, headquarters of Triangle Headquarters. Buying the company required a loan, and the loan required collateral, uh, but what was sufficiently valuable? The secret formula, really. So he bet the secret formula, Coca Cola. Formula's six year stay in New York sealed away in the Guarantees Bank's vault. Holy crap, that's hilarious. So he literally like to get the money literally had to put the collateral for it was like for the loan was a secret formula so it literally like stayed in a freaking bank's vault that's hilarious i guess that'd be the vault and candler sold the company for 25 million dollars i wonder when that was oh 1919 wow 25 million in 1919 i can only imagine how much money that would be worth now. That's amazing, wow. So we literally had uh, people trying to imitate Coca-Cola, um, trying to make it cheaper, and again, copycats trying to replicate it, so much so that they were literally offering um, rewards if they, I guess, like, found uh, imitators, which is pretty interesting. 
And I'm thinking that must be an original Coca-Cola bottle. Like an old one. See a little Coca-Cola on it there? That's pretty interesting. Oh yeah, and there, that would what the emblem would look like. Interesting. Oh, imposter, okay. I get it, I get it. Yeah, so imitators claim social, special knowledge. This is crazy. Man, who would have known Coke was such a thing? Here's the progression of the bottles. I guess, like, you know, so like they said, fits in your hand, attractive appearance, recognizable in the dark. Interesting. Here, apparently, there's a number of myths and legends. So it's basically just saying that maybe Pemberton didn't create Coca Cola by itself, maybe it originated in India or in uh, Scotland. Maybe it was created by a woman. So there's a. But here's a fact to protect secret form of Coca Cola, voluntary left India for nearly two decades. Interesting. So it looks like it was at risk in India. Um, yeah. Anyway, this is pretty interesting. And then people trying to recreate the formula. Yeah, pretty interesting. A secret formula for the most deliciously different taste the world has ever known. A secret formula for all that is, was, and ever will be. The heart of Coca-Cola. Share a Coke. Be part of the magic. We'll keep the secret. Because keeping the secret ensures that the magic lives on. Alrighty, and there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The Coca-Cola original formula is inside this bank vault right here. Now, it was brought here to the world of Coca-Cola in December of 2011. It was Coca-Cola's 125th anniversary. Prior to it being here, this formula was at two other locations. The Guaranteed Bank in New York City that's where it's still in So this is supposed to be Pemberton, the creator of the formula. And we just saw the actual Coca-Cola vault, well the vault where it's held. Um, what I'm curious about is like, what does the actual formula look like? Like, is it actually like a handwritten document? Is it printed out? I imagine it's been, you know, let's say printed out and recreated, but pretty, pretty interesting. And this is what gets really interesting. So here it's talking about nerve and brain tonic, remarkable therapeutic agent Coca-Cola. Because if I'm not mistaken, Coca-Cola used to have cocaine in it, like coca leaf, and a variety of other different, I don't know if there's any other stimulants, but probably caffeine and who knows what else. So it's pretty remarkable and interesting to think that it used to be a remarkable therapeutic agent, a nerve and brain tonic. Man, those were the good old days. <laughs> Here is a, a vehicle from Argentina, um, the special Chevrolet to make his way through traffic easier while delivering Coca-Cola. That's pretty interesting. Who would have known? This is really interesting. So here they have uh, Coke bottles from like Minnesota, Mississippi, Missouri, Montana, Kansas, Iowa, Indiana. That's interesting. I looked all over the place and here it says, so it went from a single plant in Chattanooga, Tennessee in 1899 to where in just 21 years, it went from one to 1800 plants. That's crazy. 
And I guess it had different looks and different bottles. It's pretty cool. And then, you know, to drive refreshed, have a Coke. Drive refreshed. Drive refreshed. Yeah, because it'd be freaking lit. Like, wherever you go, have a Coke. So even pilots back then were drinking Coke. And like, as we talked about all the stimulants that were in it, I mean, basically no wonder you drive refreshed. You'd be lit as heck with all the cocaine and stuff in the drink. Here we have some different things. So I guess that would be a uh, stadium dispenser. This is right there. Glasgow Stadium Dispenser. So I guess there's probably still a syrup at that point, or I guess they, I don't know, liquid, not bottles. Then we have some uh, old Coke machines um, with like, uh, with a little bottle opener, which is pretty cool. That was 10 cents at that point. Here we have what I think is one of their signature bales they were talking about, like with the syrup back in the day, different uh, Coke machines. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cool. So in relation to Coca-Cola and the Olympic torch relay, um, so essentially Coca-Cola began its relationship with the Olympic Games in Amsterdam in 1928 and it's the longest supporter of the Olympics and it partnered with the committee and a number of Olympic torch relays throughout the years and here are the torches. So here we got, uh, that's the Sochi one, that's an interesting. Here is Lao Hammer, that is definitely an interesting looking torch. We have Atlanta, we have Rio de Janeiro, we have Athens, here we have Torino, here we have London, Beijing, Sydney, Nagano, but I don't see a Coke em emblem actually on it. I don't think anyway, so I don't know how they partnered with them, but nonetheless, pretty cool. So Coca-Cola has a total of uh, more than 500 sparkling and still brands. Interesting. And these are apparently some of the most popular, so familiar ones, Minute Maid, Fanta, Gold Peak, uh, Powerade, of course, Coke. Cool stuff. And here's some more, which is definitely a lot of different looking bottles and brands. I'm familiar with definitely some of them, but not all of them. So this is roughly what a Coke technology machine would look like with water processing. And then we have a kind of filler and or bottling cap idea. So there you go. It's kind of being filled. Here, the secret formula is used to make a special concentrate, which is mixed with sweetener to make Coca-Cola syrup. An elevator lowerator. Empty bottle inspector takes a picture of the bottles, examines any defects. The packing robot. Unique to Bottle Works unloads the bottles, puts them in production. Machine rinses the bottles. Syrup and water is mixed together in the blender. And then the uh, carbonation, the CO2 is added. Printed on every bottle is a unique code in, that indicates where and when it was packaged and manufactured. And this bottling line was designed to fill approximately 20 bottles every minute, making it easier to observe the process. Although some plants are capable of doing 2,200 cans a minute, that's crazy. And then, yeah, quality assurance. And there's the bear. Looks a little, uh, this bear looks a little out of it. I've seen a little bit more energy before, I'll put it that way. They usually have these bears at all the Coke shops. Oh, social distancing today, okay. Yeah, I've had it fun. I've had the bear bite my head and stuff before. This is a very funny and quick story. So, uh, back in 1985, they launched New Coke. However, people freaked out so much 
launching lawsuits and just public outcry making songs and stuff that in only 79 days they brought back the old Coke as well as called Coke Cola Classic and then after about two years they just phased out the new Coke so it didn't work very well. And here's the scent discovery and so basically the way your brain works is your brain smells a scent, something sweet, and it tries to replicate it to something you've had previously. Like, let's say it could be like cake or ice cream. So let's go see what this is all about. So here in this room, they have a whole bunch of these scent things. So you walk up to it, you pump your scent, and you basically smell it and see if you can guess it. So we just did all one as a group there. It's pretty cool. So we have like sweet, there's fruity, and then there's spicy. So we're going to try it and see if we can guess the flavors. So this one is... Ooh. Hmm. It almost smells like caramel-ish. Caramel? Caramel. Yeah, it smells like caramel, and then we're gonna see. And the flavor is caramel. Cool, and then it tells you what kind of drinks you'd like. So Inca Cola, I've seen that one. Um, I know it's international, but I've seen it here in North America at select shops. I've never heard of that one. I've never heard of Colita, but I've heard of Fanta. So yeah, let's see what others are there. Let's try another one. Definitely bubblegum. Bubblegum. I already did this one, so I won't cheat. This one's uh, lime. And you know, the recommendations are like a Fanta melon, uh, Lincoln berry, which is you know kind of a citrusy, fruitish-ish flavor, and then of course Sprite, which is citrus. I don't know if this one's the same, but oh, it's broken. In between your scents, you cleanse it with a, yeah, coffee beans, and uh, hold on, I gotta do it again. That would work well. All right, here we got another one. Let's try this one. Oh. Ooh, um, ooh, that's a tough one. Um, it's kind of, I'm gonna say grapefruit, citrusy, it's kind of grapefruit-ish, something like that. Oh, pineapple. I got that one wrong. How does that smell like pineapple? I don't smell pineapple, but uh, is this the same one? That's the same. I got it wrong, I guess I don't smell like pineapple. Actually, you know what, hold on. I've had a pineapple crush. If you know crush soda, there's a pineapple version. It's kind of, or it's a little harder to find, but that does smell like that. So, okay, I get it, pineapple. Okay, now we're in the tasting section. So you gotta go around to like Asia. Here's Latin America. And you get a taste. All the different beverages they have from all around the world. So this is one of the coolest parts of the Coke world. I'm so excited. There's gonna be some weird drinks. This is gonna be the one time I'm gonna drink sugar sweetened beverages, everybody, just because I gotta be able to try them all. So this is gonna be interesting. I'm looking forward to it. So first up, North America doing Powerade Mountain Berry Blast. Also known as Blue Powerade, and then of course a good old vitamin water. Much love to that. Yeah. You'll Blue notice Powerade. it is sweeter out of the fountain rather than in the bottle. It is, yeah. Mm. So I like it better out of the bottle. Blue Powerade, pretty traditional. And then my vitamin water, the squeezed one. <laughs> well, this is stuff we Tastes like had, lemon. So. <laughs> Let's go on to the next one. Awesome. So on thank you for next. around the world. Via next, we're going to Europe to have Aquarius Libre, which I don't know, looks like sparkling water to me. And then a Lingdenberry, Swedish drink. First is Aquarius Libre. That's how you pronounce that one. It says it's kind of like a Spanish Powerade. Mm, okay, yeah, so a little bit of lemon. Very refreshing. Libre, I feel so the freedom. This next one we have here is from Sweden, and it's pronounced Biare. Lingonberry is going to be kind of like a similar taste of cranberry. Yeah, Biare, Biare it's called? Yes. Here's the uh, Lingonberry, Biare, similar to what you probably get at Ikea. And yeah, it's kind of a tart berry. A little sweeter than like a cranberry, but... No carbonation. Yeah. Like it's good. Yeah. Thank you. So we're going to Welcome Latin to America. America. Thanks so much. Good, thank you. Here we're having an Inca Cola, which I know Badlands of Chugs, and a Fanta. Hey, have a good time? Yeah. yeah, it's been great. All right, well, our first drink is gonna be Fanta Colita, and it's from Costa Rica. That's the red one? Yeah. Fanta Colita from Fanta Costa Colita. Rica. Costa Rica. Costa Rica. 
Okay, it's kind of like a cream soda. Yeah. This is a little strong. So it tastes like, it's like cherry. It tastes like coffee. Oh yeah? I'd say like a, like a strong tasting cream soda. Kind of like a big red. More like a big red actually. Okay. okay. And this one here is from Shout Peru, out Texas. And it's called Inca Cola. Inca Cola. Inca Cola. I've seen this in stores. Yeah. Yeah. Time, yeah. So. yeah. Inca Cola from Peru. It tastes like banana or even something say baba I like it. It's really sweet. sweet. Yeah, it is sweet. I feel it's hard to actually taste after the Fanta because the Fanta was overpowering, but... Right, right. Yeah, yeah maybe a little bit like bubble gum. How a little long bit just sweet. Uh, we've been here for like four days so far. We got another one. So we're five. in Asia. We're going to have a Vegeta Beta. Sounds like uh, Dragon Ball Z. It, it, I'm trying to place kind of like a pear. I don't know. It's it's a juice-ish. It's not a carbonated. Interesting. What's it supposed to taste like? You don't know. <laughs> and, and what's this one? The Minute Maid Joy. Uh, Minute uh, Apple Lychee from South Apple Korea. Apple Lychee from South Korea. Oh wow, that is sweet as hell. With that being said. That's very delicious. Lychee. That's a good one. All right. Thank you. My pleasure. You all have a great afternoon. You too. Puckering or, you know, burning. So here we are. Here we are. Thank you. Here we are in Africa trying. This one's called Stony and Ginger Beer from Tanzania. There we go. And uh, let's give it a shot. You may want to sip it. It's really intense. Kind of burns. Yeah, it. it's like a ginger beer. Yeah. Stony ginger beer, Tanzania. I like it. Yeah. It's a solid ginger beer. And then this is Kiwi Mango burn. Bebo. Very sweet, but good. And then Bebo, Bebo from South Africa. Woo! That is very sweet. Very sweet. Very, very sweet. So you pucker, I heard your lips are kind of kiwi. Mm. One's it's intense very good, sweet, though. one's intense burn. Yeah. I'd hate to know how much sugar's in that one, it's but it's bit. it's very uh, it's very sweet. It's, it's better not to know some things. Yeah. That's what I say. Yeah, yeah. All right, you guys are delightful. Thank you. Have y'all seen our second floor? There's three things back that way. So don't miss anything. And when you're ready to go, that's your way out. The bears are waiting on you, sir. And then there's your restaurant.